Hey guys and welcome back to my playthrough of Assassin's Creed 2. Now on the last episode we, well, we took out the Patsy and uh, in today's episode we are we are going to deal with, well, not really deal with, we are, uh, Leonardo got actually transferred to, Ve to Venice and we are on our way to meet him. But before that, go all right money wise let's see what I can upgrade buongiorno salute Sir Ezio shall we take a look at the list now the only thing we can upgrade well, the only thing left to upgrade is basically the doctor, so here you go. And uh, there we go. Monterigioni is all Buon repaired. Viaggio. Now with the money I got, let's go buy myself some new studs. Okay. So, all right, pouches. Hey, I'm gonna get this one. And now I'm poor. Oh, whatever. Let's go to Leonardo. All right. I have to say, I really love the details on the armor. Leonardo! Ezio? What luck! I uh, have run into a bit of trouble. <laughs> Let me see if I can help. I know how to fix it, but lack the means to do so. If you could just lift the wagon. <clears throat> what is this thing? Eh? It looks like a giant bat. Oh, nothing. Just an idea I've been working on. I could not leave it behind. <clears throat> What is it for? Well, I shouldn't really talk about it. Beh, al diavolo. I can't hold it in anymore. Ezio, I think I figured out how to make a man fly. <laughs> Come on, I'll drive. But I haven't even told you where I'm going. All right. Venezia, such a beautiful city. So many sources of inspiration. Ponte di Rialto, Piazza San Marco, L'Arsenale. What's wrong? We're not alone. What's happening? Who are they? Rodrigo Borgia's men. Why? What do they want with us? I think they want us dead. Leonardo, hide! Oh. They're trying to climb on board! Knock oh. them off! Come on, get off your damn... It's your... Someone's on top! The shot turns to make the carriage roll! Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, okay. Hey, oh. Okay, come on, come on. And there you go. Right. Oh. And there she goes. Oh. Oh. Bye bye. Watch out. Don't let the carriage roll over. Oh. Oh great. Hold on tight. It's going to be a little rough.
Oh, come on, really? Holy. Oh. Holy goodness. Ah, oh, come on, really? Oh. Oh, that was miraculous. Oh, come on, really? really? Bye-bye. Ooh. Bye-bye. What's with the fire bombs? Come on, really? Oh, um. bye bye. Go, Leonardo. They are here for me, not you. And catch up with you later. Okay, sort out. And um, time for cheap tricks. The brood. Yeah. Now, if I remember correctly, oh, not here. Mm -hmm. Really, nothing. Oh well. Let's go. Now we are in Forley. Um, it doesn't really have. There's not really much mission here. Well, if you discount the DLC. But whatever. Let's go to Leonardo. Ezio, here, over here. All right, all right. Thank you, Ezio. You saved my life. I did what had to be done. You would have done the same. I doubt it. Bravery is not my strong suit. I owe you a debt, brother. Di niente. Tutti a bordo! Fra poco si salpa! That's our traghetto. Venezia waits. Where's your pass? What pass? You don't have a pass? You cannot enter Venezia without a pass. Who invited you? Uh, nobody. Basta! No pass, no entrance! Don't worry, Leonardo. I'll come up with something. Don't just stand there! I need help! Alright. Let's see. Where is a boat? Oh, come on, I have to swim? Oh, well. Row. Oh, Dio, 
ti scongiuro! Qualcuno mi aiuti! Aiuto! Yeah, yeah. Madonna. Oh, you're good. The ladies must like you. I wasn't looking to impress, only to help someone in distress. Which is exactly why you impress. And you are Messer... Auditore, but please, come Ezio. Let's go around. I'm Caterina. Now, Ezio, we must find you suitable reward. Do you have any suggestions? There is perhaps something you could help me with. I'm all ears. Don't want to piss off the lady now. Oh, come on, really? All right. Yes, Signora. Whatever you say, Signora. He won't trouble you anymore. I took care of it. Thank you, Caterina. Perhaps we'll see each other again. Should you ever find yourself in the city of Forley, it would be my pleasure to welcome you. I look forward to enjoying your hospitality. Please accept my most humble apologies, Messere. Had I known... It's quite all right, my friend. Yep. Be careful, Ezio. Do you know who that was? My next conquest. <laughs> uh, I don't think so, Ezio. That's Caterina Sforza, daughter of the Duca di Milano. Her husband is... Husband? See, si. her husband is the Lord of Forli. That woman is as powerful and dangerous as she is young and beautiful. Sempre come una donna per me. Everything all right? Better than all right. You're making amazing progress. Amazing is quite a strong word. Then why are we stopping? Prolonged exposure to the Animus can have, uh, side effects. Heh, <laughs> awesome. It's nothing to worry about. You haven't shown any of the symptoms. Symptoms? What symptoms? Degradation of cognition, temporal hallucinations, multiple awareness issues, overlapping realities, you know. So, what you're saying is... What we're saying, Desmond, is if you're not careful, you may not need the Animus to visit with your ancestors. Which wouldn't be a bad thing, assuming you could control it. Up until now, though, no one has. Subject 16. We have safeguards, Desmond. And they kept him in the Animus for way too long, sometimes days at a time. We're being careful with you. I hope so. Anyway, I was hoping we could test out your skill retention. See if you've picked up some of Ezio's abilities. I'm game. Great. Meet me downstairs when you're ready. Before that, um, do you have anything to tell me, Sean? What could 16 have found that needs so much secrecy and security? Well, I don't know, do I? Lucy thinks it's something about the Codex, but I'm not so sure. I'm all ears if it's as life-changing as Sixteen says. Blimey, if I was allowed to use the Animus, I'd be the one in there finding out. Instead, as usual, I'm forced to sit here on the sidelines. Oh, talk about being salty. So what's the plan? We're gonna see what you've managed to retain. Come on! Abstergo's out there, looking for us. 
They're better funded and better equipped. So it's only a matter of time before they find this place. We need to be ready for them when they do. I want you to activate the warehouse's defense system. I'll let you figure out how to reach the sensors. Oh, come on. Not even a hint? Open your eyes, Desmond. Okay. Let's go! Uh, Lucy? I'm seeing things. Do the hallucinations last longer than 30 seconds? No. Then it's nothing to be worried about. It'll pass. Well, easy for you to say. You're not the so, one experiencing it. How am I doing? Experiencing it? You've picked up every single one of Ezio's skills. No. The adoption rate is fantastic. Another day or two and we'll be done. I was just walking over. What the hell are you talking about? Ah, oh, whatever. Jump here, din din din. Uh, up here. Climb up, Desmond. Alright. Not here. Uh. What the? Oh, here. All right, you got to tell me, why Ezio? Why Italy? I mean, we could have just gone back to Altair again. Followed him during his early years. It started with 16. Ah, good old subject 16. He repainted my room, you Oh, know, shit. With his blood. I've oh. been going through his files. Vidic flagged a couple of his animus sessions. A bunch of different ancestors, different dates and locations. Oh. Ancient Africa, the Middle East. But towards the end, he became obsessed with Italy. I think he knew about the vault. Anything else? A few else? of the records of his later anima sessions are missing. <laughs> and the sessions that are there... <sighs> after everything the Templars put him through... After everything... I put him through... It's all scrambled. If we hadn't pushed Sixteen so hard, we'd have the answers already. And maybe he'd still be alive. So you're after the Codex and the Vault. I knew you had an ancestor in Italy who was at the center of all of this. Okay. Alright, I think we're done for the day. You should get some rest. Lucy, what happened to Sixteen wasn't your fault. You were just as much a prisoner as I was. Thanks. Good night, Desmond. I'm glad you're here. Well, I see. Well, maybe Desmond doesn't just pick up Ezio's skills. I think he pick up his charm. Do you see the hand gestures? Oh well, whatever. Oh great. The hell? What the hell? What is this? Where am I? It's Acre. Altair. How the hell? Not even in the Animus. I must have passed out. Just having some kind of weird dream. Going without sleep, who knows how long. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. All right. Mm. That must be his target. Um, where? Oh. Oh. Hello. Get on that la Get on the ladder. Really? She pushed me off?
Come on. We don't have all day. Here we go. It's the woman from Acre. What's her name? Maria. Yeah. I wonder what he wants with her. Whoa. All right. Wasn't expecting that. Altair just just showed her his hidden blade. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but it's getting late and we were... Hey, you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, all good. Weird dreams, that's all. Alright, I'll let you get ready. See you in a few. Ah, good of you to join us. Sorry. Long night. What a professional. What a professional approach. Leave him alone. Well, you'll forgive me if I want to get some actual work done. Mm, madness, isn't it? Sean! Please, that's enough. All right. Nothing to say. Hey. <clears throat> uh, hi. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Everything's fine. You sure? We lost two more teams last night. That's eight more of us, just... gone. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do anymore. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Hey, remember what you told me? You gotta have faith. And look, here we are, safe and sound. <laughs> For how long? And when they find us? Then what? When that happens, if that happens, we'll deal with it. I'll keep you safe. Anyway, enough with my little breakdown. I should get back to work. And so should you. Okay. Anything to say, Sean? Nah. Okay, back in the end. Back into the Animus.
Alright. Hmm. You know what? Before I talk to Leonardo. Alright. Messer Da Vinci! Yes? Buongiorno e ben arrivato. I am Elvis. Signor Donna has asked that I escort you to the workshop. Are you ready? Okay. Ah, Venezia. What other place is as beautiful, as stable, as perfect? Come, I will show you her wonders. Our first stop, the Rialto Bridge. Behold the elegance with which she spans the Grand Canal, a symbol of Venetian unity and pride. Let us continue. Here we are, San Giacomo di Rialto, oldest church in Venezia. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, and this one. Tower. Magnifico! Come, come, there's more to see. No other city can match the size of Venezia's markets. Be it spices or silk, from near and far. There is, there is. You were told to stay home, but the rent is paid. I have every right to sell here. Emilio disagrees. Stop, no, stop, stop. Let us continue the tour elsewhere. Okay. Look, isn't it amazing? Would you mind buying it for me? I have... Uh, I left my money with my bags. Hey! Mind your step, Corleone! Yeah, he's not falling for that anymore. Here we have the Palazzo della Seta, home to Emilio Barbarigo. Normally I'd suggest a closer look, but with the way things are now... Why? What's happened? He is attempting to unify the merchants beneath a single banner. There's been resistance. Some of it violent. What kind of resistance? They say they're fighting for the people, for freedom or some such nonsense. But Giannate, if you ask me. They destroyed my stand. I demand compensation. Here you are, then. <clears throat> the Doge will know about this. I'll report you to the council. Good luck with that. Why friend. is he blood spattered? Oh, oh, what are you doing? You're under arrest for a disrupting commerce. What? You just invented that. There's no such law. There is now. No, stop. Go. And now I present to you your workshop, Sir Da Vinci. We spared no expense in its design. You'll see, it is perfect, as if you never left Firenze. I wish you great success and hope you enjoy Venezia as much as she enjoys having you. <laughs> so, here we are. Exciting, isn't it? Care to come in? It may be later. I need to visit the Palazzo della Seta. Try and gain an audience with Emilio. As you wish. But should you find yourself with free time, or another Codex page, don't hesitate to visit. My door is always open. Grazie, my friend. Uh. Di nulla.
Okay. Emilio Barbarigo, titan of Venetian industry, terror of the underworld. Aided by his powerful family, he cornered the market through smart business practices such as edging out the competition and lobbying the government. He funded the Venetian police force almost single-handedly, keeping the streets safe from crime and his finances tax-free. Emilio claims to be a supporter of the Republic. The problem is, once you own the police force, voting becomes, well, inefficient. As does, you know, opposition. Yeah, in case you've forgotten, he's the guy standing near the Spaniard and in the last episode. So looks like we got ourselves in we got ourselves another target. Mm. You know what? Let's go to the palazzo. I found this awesome place for you to explore and practice your skills. Santa Maria de Frari. I've marked it on your map. I'm over here. How best to get inside? Scale the wall and... Oh, that's not good. I'll never make that jump. I need to find another way. Never did apologize for knocking me over. No! Va bene, where to? The water. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. <sighs> okay. Hey. Oh, come on, really? Come any closer. Okay. Come on now. Really? What are you doing? Hurry up! Stop running past me then. I'll be better off on my own. Really? Fear not. I'll make sure he's Oh. Oh. Hurry up. God damn archers. Who wants to die first? All right. Ooh. 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 Okay. Come on. Quickly, they're getting closer. Fear not. I'll make sure each of you dies quickly. Ow. And damn. God damn archers. Okay. Don't fail. Be better off on my own. And you can't walk anymore. Perfect. Ah, uh, Christ! 
on my leg. I never did catch your name. Uh, Rosa. There you go. Honorato, Rosa. I'm Ezio. I know. What do you mean, I know? No. <laughs> Oh, uh, not you. Oh, come on, not you. Ezio, what are you doing? Come here. Yeah, yeah, shut up. Right, adieu. Oh, come on, really? Damn. Oh, well. Let's go. Hugo! What's this? Rosa's been wounded. Us are here. We'll go the rest of the way in the boat. Careful. Go! I'll deal with the guards! Okay. Got you! Can't. Oh my Kill them, Axio! Quickly! Um... Anywhere else? Oh. There. Can you roll faster then? Um. Oh, come on, really? They're all over the rooftops! Do something quickly! Oh, where are they? Oh, over there. <laughs> all right, all right, sheesh. Not there. There he is. Yajou. There. Don't let them get away. Oh well. At least I got one throwing knife. They're shooting at us. No, they aren't. Ooh. Bye bye.
Come on, come on. Took a wrong turn, did I? Yep. All right. Ooh. Ah, yes. Inside here. Ooh. Yeah. Come on. Say a prayer later. Porco I demonio. need to see. I need to see Antonio. Be careful. Let me do it. Go and find Antonio. Mr. Hugo, do what he says. Qual l'ultimo arrivato dagli ordini? Hey, hey, wake up. We need help. Where's Antonio? Make yourselves useful. Clear a space for her. Put her down there. Where are we? Om. They've sent for help. Thank you. Rosa, what's happened? Just get this out of me. Soon, soon. Let's have a look first. Clean entry and exit through the thigh. That's good. Get it out! Rosa, we must take care not to... Now! Come here, boy. Tenetela. I'm sorry, Piccola. Sorry! Ficatelo nel polo, you're sorry! Go fetch Bianca and be quick. Help me with this. How? Take a clean piece of linen. All right. When I remove my hand, press the cloth into her wound. Are you ready? Now. Uh, ben uh, you work well under pressure. Uh, She's spirited this one. Porca putana! Avanti. Get Rosa inside so that Bianca can close the wound. You'll be all right. The worst is past. Venisi cancero, brutto bastardo! A te che la grandissima troia di tua madre! Thank you. Rosa is most dear to me. If I had lost her... I've always had a soft spot for women in distress. So I've heard. Don't look so surprised. We know all about you, Ser Ezio. Your work in Florence and the rest of Tuscany. Good work, too. If a little... unrefined. Then you know why I'm in Venezia. I can guess. When you have a minute, come see me in my office. There's something we should discuss. Alrighty, and this people is where I'm gonna leave it off. I know it's a bit of a cliffhanger, but hey, I'm it's practically one hour since I started playing, so yeah. Um, hey guys, and welcome back to this episode of Bite Size History. Now, today we will be talking about medicine in the Renaissance. In this time period, they actually followed the, the historical Greek founder of medicine, Hippocrates' ideas, that the body actually has four types of humors, four liquids, uh, blood, black bile, yellow bile, and phlegm. Now, if you actually read about history, these theories actually were propagated by 
were first developed by Hippocrates and then just spread around by Galen and all types of medical professionals of the time. And generally you can see them getting caught up in astrology, in prediction, in alchemy and whatnot. But let's just say compared to old shamanistic ideas, this is actually considered better. Basically each humor actually has something tied to it. For example, blood is associated with air, the hot and moist element. Black is associated with earth and the element it has is cold and dry. The ye yellow is fire, hot and dry. The phlegm is water, cold and moist. So when, for example, if you got sick in this kind of time period, the first thing the, the physician will do is to give you a regimen to try out for maybe a week or two. For example, let's say you caught a fever in this time period. Well, according to the humor theory, you have a excess of yellow bile, which is fire. To counteract that, they basically have to increase the production of phlegm in your body, which is water. And how they do that is basically cold baths. Yeah, you have to take ice cold baths for about a week or two. And in vice versa, for example, if you have a runny nose, means you have excess of phlegm. And to counteract that, they have to introduce fire or heat into your body. And that translates into bedtime and a lot of wine. Yeah, somehow I can see a lot of people just smiling with that description. But if, for example, if you try the regimen and it doesn't work, then they will actually move on to a more reliable method, which is herbs. Uh, actually, Hippocrates and Galen, despite propagating these this uh, four humor theory, they are, they actually also they don't dismiss herbs entirely, but they do try to restrict the, the usage. Too much medicine is actually a bad thing. Now, depending on what you do, while you were traveling through, while you're watching this walkthrough, either you play the game or you are watching this walkthrough. You will hear a lot of doctors saying about weekly bleedings and they've caught a fresh batch of leeches and whatnot. Basically, in this period, they believe the blood is a one-time thing. For example, they believe the blood is actually developed, is created within your kidney. And then it will do whatever mysterious purpose it was doing and then just, and then it will just be thrown out. A clearer example would be to imagine your arteries as a as a road and the blood as a paper cup. So paper cup was made in the kidney, do whatever mysterious thing you were doing, and then it was just when 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 the duty is done they would be thrown by the wayside. They would just be tossed onto the street. And over time the street will start to get clogged up, you know. What will happen if you start to litter everywhere? So, in order to facilitate blood movement, they will advise bleeding. So, by removing the excess junk blood, new blood will actually move around your body faster. And uh, depending on what type of uh, disease you have, for example, I believe high pressure, like people with high blood pressure, will actually relieve from pain if they, you know, get a weekly bleeding. But I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Now, on the subject of plague doctors, these are the guys that were wearing like long black clothes and a brim hat and a mask. These are not just costumes. The dress itself are actually oiled so to insulate between them and the world. The beak-like mask, were actually, the beak part were actually stuffed with herbs like lavender and things because back in the day they believed disease were actually caused by miasma or bad air characterized by foul smelling air if you smell something bad chances are that's the cause of disease you are you are having now and generally they have a staff or a stick to check people with you know to, just to move their hands around and whatnot so they don't have to go around touching the people and for a time they actually worked like the time before the Black Death, it actually kind of worked somewhat. But the Black Death. Now, before the time, uh, there were a lot, 
a lot of the doctors were very, very professional. They were professional. They studied the writings of Hippocrates. They followed the ideas of Galen. They were doing some good, some being relative. But the Black Death was not something they can cure. It was just a mystery without an answer. A lot of professionals actually got wiped out by the Black Death. And in this period of a lot of diseases and yet no doctors, a lot of quack doctors actually started to appear. Started to appear. These were people without any form of medical knowledge, dressed up as a doctor, and offering their services to the people. Let's just say their services doesn't really work, but you can't really discount placebo effect now, can you? For example, you can be an apple seller today and then suddenly you can be a play doctor tomorrow. And the treatments were really, well, let's just say they don't work at all. Usually these are just people who are trying to make a quick buck. They were trying to get more coins in their pockets. But, you know, having one in your city is a really good stress reliever. So, aside from supposed treatments, they were generally hired by the governing body to count the dead. And a bit of a side note for this humor theory on the, ed- on the end of this episode, the four humor theory were, were so prevalent and it wasn't discounted until 1850s. Yeah. Thank goodness I was born in this time period because I don't think I will survive. If I was, if the world was still using the four humor theory. So that's it for this episode of Bite Size History. Thank you all for watching, and see you guys on the next episode. Ciao.